metabolic switching. So here's, here's the concept I want you to get. This is a big one. You are not meant to be in the same state all the time. So let's think about that. Let's think about that idea for a moment. Happiness. Let's just take happiness. I mean, don't we all want to be happy all the time? But you're not designed to be happy all the time. So when you're unhappy, we like try so hard to get back to happiness, but yet it's in the unhappiness or the trials and the tribulations that we can grow and we can learn more about ourselves in those moments than we can learn in the moments of happiness. So you've got, you know, the, that as being, you know, sad depression and joy really being on two sides of the mental health conversation. Everybody's trying to get to joy all the time and they're negating the difficult moments, the depression, the anxiety. But in those moments, we can really truly find a, a, a way to tools to allow ourselves to be that much uh, more happy when we switch back. Um, temperature. Uh, let's talk about that for a moment. You're not meant to be at the same temperature all the time. So if you look at like cold plunges, why is everybody doing cold plunges and getting incredible results? It's because we've all been in, you know, in an environment now where we have been keeping our temperature where we want it. We don't want to be too cold. We don't want to be too hot. And we're always trying to keep ourselves in that comfort level. And when we're in that comfort level, growth can't happen. So you've got all these people now that are cold plunging and having incredible dopamine rushes because what they did is they pulled themselves out of a comfort state and went into a state of discomfort and, and, and they hadn't done that in a while. And so now the body responds favorably. So we want to be able, and I could get, you know, light's another one. Like, obviously we're not supposed to be in daylight all the time because we get night. So, but then what do we do at night is we turn on lights that simulate day which is why you're seeing so many people gravitate towards red light and using that at night because it's more in conjunction with what our bodies were designed to have when it's dark out. So, I mean, there are example after example after example of how we need to start to sync back up with these moving in and out of two different states. So with metabolic switching, one of the things that... Um, is really important to understand is just because we love fasting doesn't mean we should do it all the time. That's, you know, that's a huge premise of fast like a girl. Um, and it's a huge mistake that everybody that did, uh, Jason Fung's obesity code, they got so excited about their results. They got uh, really excited that they could do one meal a day and lose all this weight. And then they all got stuck. Um, and which is why we had to evolve the conversation. And, and bring it to new levels. So when we look at the diet culture and how we've approached losing weight, we have only approached it from the food angle. And yet we have two systems, met metabolisms in our body. We call them energy systems. And we have two of them. One of them runs off of the food you eat. That's called the sugar burner system. So every diet you've been on, every food change you've made, every uh, calorie you've counted, macro you've counted, you know, you are only operating and manipulating and, uh, and, and working with this one system. If you only operate from this system and you never go into the other system that I'll talk about in a while, um, you will fail. You will get temporary results, but ultimately you will fail and you also will accelerate um, aging. So in order to push the body into the other energy system, we go without food and it takes about eight hours from the last meal to start to feel like you're going to switch over into the second metabolism, the energy, the second energy system. And that takes you somewhere between eight to 12 hours to slowly switch over. 
So w- there's variability in that. In if you if you're new to fasting, those first four hours could be difficult. Why do we use the word hunger as a positive when we say somebody's hungry for success or they're hungry for change? We know that that means that they are at, at, in, in a situation where they need to move into a different situation. They are being pulled by something that hunger is pulling them to something better. But when we say I'm hungry because I haven't eaten food, none of us think it's pulling us into a place that's somewhere better. We want to stop that immediately. That is how the culture has taught us. But in that eight to, to you know, somewhere between eight to 12, that four hour window that that's going to, you're going to metabolically switch over into the fat burning place, you may be hungry and that is okay. And because you're moving into a place where now the second metabolism can kick in and when it kicks in, it is going to start to burn fat for fuel. Okay. I got to interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called a beginner's guide to a fasting lifestyle. And all you've got to do is click here and you can jump right in. So if you've never fasted, you've never experienced this system. And I always say it's two-pronged. First, it's not a diet. It's a healing state. And it's not a fad. It's not going away. So if you are here to lose weight, A, I want to applaud you. But I also want you to, to take that idea that what you're about to do, what I want you to understand is this art of going through the difficult window to get to this other metabolism so that your body can heal and, and burn fat in a way that you've never experienced before. And then from that point, I want you to be able to learn how to go back into food and eat good quality food that keeps that healing state going. Reducing calories down does not keep the healing state going. Counting calories is not a healing state place. Um, Counting points, I'm not, I'm not like anti Weight Watchers or anything like that, but it was just the points became a tool to give people control over their food to understand how far off the deep end they were getting. But what the new elevation in weight loss has been is let me eat good quality food and then let me attach that good quality food to different length fasts. And then let me learn how to dip in and out of these two states. If that's all you ever did with your nutrition lifestyle, you would lose weight, you would have energy, and you would slow the aging process down. I am, I am a thousand percent convinced people who are not fasting and not dipping over here are speeding up aging and building chronic disease. It is a major problem that we have in, in, in our in our health world today, but we're over here debating, should I be a vegan? Should I be carnivore? Should I be, maybe I should do, you know, uh, the, I don't even know what the diets are now, like the Zoom Noom diet. There's some new Noom diet that just came out. Um, whatever it is, we're over here in the that conversation and you will not find me over there. Come find me over in the metabolic switching conversation. And then you have the fasting movement that is like more fasting, more fasting, fasting's better. The more you fast, the more you heal. You're not gonna find me over there in that conversation either. You're gonna find me in the conversation that lets us move in and out of these two states. Now, you have a decision to make when you come o- on both of these places, before I move into other, other ways we metabolically switch, you, you have a decision of how strong you want your sugar burner metabolism to be and how much healing you want your fat burning metabolism to to access when you're over here. That is personal to you. So I have seen people who have decided that they love fasting. It keeps them where their weight wants to be. 
they it's convenient for their work day, but they still are going to eat their their food that they want to eat. And they're never going to change that. So that means if I love McDonald's, then I want to eat McDonald's all the time, but I want to eat it in an eight hour window and leave 16 hours for my body to repair and access this, this fat burning um, place that I technically can do that without gaining weight, without raising my blood pressure, without raising my cholesterol, um, without uh, destroying my liver. Technically, I can do that based off of that was um, uh, Sachin Panda's work, uh, and it was published in Cell Metabolism. It's called 168, and it is the most common way to, um, to look at uh, or the most popular way to fast. And, and research is the most, has backed it the most. Now, I don't recommend that you eat McDonald's all the time and that you eat the bad foods. If you, if you really want to take your health to a whole nother level, then let's clean this system up. And the best way to clean this system up at the, in the most simple place that I can tell you is stop eating bad fats. Like just stop eating bad fats. That the bad fats are, there's nothing nutritious about canola oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, sunflower, south, safflower, partially hydrogenated soybean oils, nothing, there's nothing good about them. And start eating the good fats, avocado oil, um, uh, olive oil, MCT oil, sesame, I list them all in, in the appendixes of the book. So make sure that 90% of your week is going to be cleaning up those oils. And, and the first place you start is your house. Make sure that you um, have your whole house is free of those oils. Okay, with that in mind. So uh, just don't give up on yourself. You got this, I promise, so. Okay, you trying to maximize your weight loss? Apple cider vinegar may be the key. Go check out this video where I show you exactly when, how, and why you wanna use it for weight loss. Apple cider vinegar changes your microbiome of your gut. This good bacteria is gonna to help to bring your blood sugar down and make it so that you can switch over into the fat burning state